in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the current conditions and we're also going to be taking a look at a monster storm that is very quickly going to develop over the central regions of the nation in the plains along the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes as well, bringing snowfall, severe weather and heavy rainfall and then we're going to be taking a look at multiple potential east coast snowstorms we've been talking about for a few days now and colder air on the way in the long range more of it than we've even seen in the past few videos actually so as we take a look at these current conditions we can see there's a deep trough digging into the western united states and then kind of a flatter look here on the jet stream along the eastern united states and this is going to bring warmer temperatures overall for a lot of the eastern regions the eastern two-thirds of the nation i would say are going to be de be dealing with primarily these warmer more mild conditions this isn't going to last very long though and we'll talk about that in a little while we have about three storm systems taking place over the united states at this point one here isn't really impacting the u.s as much anymore but we can see some lingering precipitation for michigan this is very quickly coming to an end though and mostly becoming a canadian system we do see it's kind of the same story here with this coastal low, the one that has this long cold front extending underneath it here. This is what brought all the storminess up and down the eastern United States yesterday uh, right here. So this is kind of storm number two. This one is bringing some mixed precipitation to Maine, but this is also going to be moving out and mostly becoming a Canadian system. Again, this one right here is kind of moving out as well. This one, however, is going to lead towards more and more impacts over the coming days. We can already see it's a very impactful system. We see rainfall, plenty of it happening for California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico as well. And then some snowfall up through the mountains of Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, Idaho there. Even through the plains of South Dakota and Nebraska, kind of the hilly regions there, we're seeing some snowfall happening. And then your Sierra Nevada regions of California are also seeing some of that snowfall. Let's go ahead and zoom into this one, actually, and we can see the flow of things. We see the southward movement of the precipitation along the California coast, and then this quick pinch in that uh, jet stream there that is leading towards the precipitation quickly turning around in a hurry south of California and Arizona and leading towards these showers moving northward here on the eastern end of things. Your low is in between here. And then we see the snowfall happening up here, again, for these mountainous regions of Idaho, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, and Wyoming. Now, this all of this storm system is going to kind of move quickly into the plains over the coming days. And this is where things are going to really blow up into a monster storm. Uh, just a quick bombing out low that is going to lead towards a lot of impacts for many different states across these portions here of the nation. A majority of the nation, I would say. Uh, space-wise. So definitely going to be an interesting scenario. We see this storm system again was leading towards some snowfall and rainfall, but that has gone ahead and moved out here into Canada. And then we see our coastal low here uh, over uh, these coastal regions here of Canada. And this is really going to be leading towards impacts for both Newfoundland and Nova Scotia uh, over the coming days. But we see this is moving out from Maine uh, with heavy rainfall and snowfall occurring still, but that is going to be coming to an end over the coming hours. Now, what we're going to do is go ahead, move on, and talk about only the upcoming pattern where we're going to dive into the storms and how they're going to develop and unfold here, both the ongoing ones and future ones. And then we'll move into that temperature pattern and really dive into the fact that we're expecting really cold temperatures down the road. Now here we are taking a look at some of these storms, and this is actually in the past a little bit. So we're going to move on towards this afternoon, Sunday, January 1st. Oh yeah, Happy New Year's, guys. I forgot it's 2023. That's what happens sometimes. I always forget important details during these videos sometimes. But uh, yeah, Happy New Year's, guys. 2023, we're starting it off right with the first video of 2023 here. That is so crazy to think about. We have this strong storm already by later today, this afternoon, strengthening over Utah and leading towards major snowfall occurring throughout, again, California, Nevada, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado here. Still a lot of rainfall here for Southern California and Arizona, even these more desertous regions seeing an interesting amount of snowfall or rainfall here, some snowfall for those more mountainous regions. And honestly, where this jet stream kind of spreads out and becomes less intense with the windiness, we are seeing sporadic showers as you can see, just kind of throughout everywhere here in the eastern half of the nation later on today. By the time we're reaching tomorrow, what we see is this storm system has done one of the more interesting things that storms do in our nation. Something that makes our weather so interesting is they have to move over these tall mountains. And they usually 
lower in intensity and then regain that intensity once they reach the eastern side of things. So we see that it, it, it goes from a 998, kind of just goes all over the place, becomes more broad, low pressure, and then redevelops there uh, over this region here. It's a little bit more broad, but we see it over the Texas and Oklahoma panhandle there. Uh, and this is an interesting setup. We've talked about this for a couple days now. We see this warm front here, which is leading towards the surging storminess and uh, in general warmer air that we're seeing here. Cold front underneath here. Uh, so we're seeing snowfall on the back end of things here taking place. So we see snowfall in all of these corridors north of the warm front and to the west of that cold front. Uh, and I definitely anticipate potential severe weather starting out Monday into Tuesday. That's the second into the third. Uh, and we're going to also see this continue uh, as we reach into Tuesday afternoon. Again, we see this storm intensifying down to a 991 millibar low pressure center with wintry weather here for the northern plains and the upper Midwest as well. And then we can see as we reach into the deeper south here on the cold front side of things. So right here is probably where that cold front is taking place. Warm front is about here. We see potential for severe weather down here on day three here for Tuesday, January 3rd. And then even into Wednesday, Wednesday into Friday, or Wednesday into Thursday, better yet, here we see that by the time we're reaching the afternoon hour, I think there's some potential for severe weather along the southeast as well, even into the mid-Atlantic uh, here and this is going to be a really interesting setup. But regardless, plenty of precipitation taking place over a majority here of the eastern United States. Uh, we are seeing some snowfall here in the Great Lakes and upper Midwest. So plenty of uh, snowfall happening. That's going to be taking place for Michigan and Wisconsin primarily here. Uh, so we see still some wintry weather on the northern side of things. And this follows up with some cold air. We see a little bit of warmth move into the west, some cold into the east here. And this is going to overall be a good setup for some snow showers for the eastern United States there as things will be cold enough there. And then we see some wintry weather still happening out west with a second winter storm here uh, in the upcoming pattern. Now as we continue things on, we see a weaker, more clipper-like system move through into the northeast here. That's going to be the 8th into the 9th there. And then as we're ending this model run, we see a very strong storm system developing over the south-central United States. And this could also be a very interesting setup, if you ask me. So definitely going to be interesting to see what plays out with this one. But we see the same factors here, the warm and humid stormy conditions to the east of this thing. Uh, the cold front is kind of down by the Gulf, so we're seeing this type of a scenario, but we still could see some severe weather on the eastern end of this storm. And look, snowfall very far south here on the northern end of things. Super, super interesting setup here, uh, to say the least. Now, we're going to take a comparative look here at the GFS model. And as you can see, we're going to take this all the way to about the 5th, where we see the cold air move in. This, this model in particular has a low developing here off the east coast and we see a snowstorm for the northeast and really the east in general here a lot of the mid-atlantic ohio valley and northeast seeing this very very interesting scenario here and the gfs doesn't stop there we get this clipper system the same one the european model just showed but as we continue this on we get another close call here right around the 11th 10th 11th time frame where there is plenty of cold air it just doesn't translate into a snowstorm here but obviously if you know anything about these models this is a very close miss if you ask me, this is very close to being uh, a, a big snowstorm, honestly, uh, is a possibility here. Now, especially with a 997, we have the cold air diving here into the east, so certainly very interesting to see. As we continue things on, and we, we see really quickly another clipper system here around the 14th here, then we see more of a southern clipper almost a southern slider but a clipper kind of combined with a slider there uh, we see for pennsylvania maryland virginia west virginia uh, into uh, ohio there some snowfall showers happening around the 15th 16th time frame and then we're left with a very stormy pattern over the entire nation here by the time we're reaching about the midpoint of the month now take this all with a grain of salt especially the things beyond 10 days here because we got really far on the gfs model there so certainly take it with a grain of salt Let's take a look at the total precipitation here, and this is according to our European model. Over the next 10 days, our total precipitation, anywhere in the whites is practically none. Your grays is a tenth of an inch or less. Your greens, a tenth of an inch to half an inch. 
Your blue's a half an inch to an inch, your yellow's an inch to two inches, red's two to five inches, brown's five to ten inches of precipitation, and then your blues are going to be 10 to 15. And we see some of that still for California as we're going to have these frequent storms moving onshore to the west. Uh, so that's going to be the trend here coming up. Now, as we take a look here at our total snowfall through the next 10 days, anywhere in the grays is a dusting, if anything, blues, 2 to 6 inches of snowfall, purple, 6 to 10, pinks, 10 to 20 there, your pastel blues, 20 to 35, and then your pastel pinks, 35 inches plus, and we see that for the Sierra Nevadas here, where we have 145 inches somewhere in there as the maximum over the next 10 days. Believe it or not, even though that seems like a huge amount, that is about half as much as we saw on the models just a couple of days ago. So a lot of that has already fallen. And now on the back end of things, we expect more dry conditions here for California. So that storminess looks to come to an end temporarily towards the end of the model run. Now, as we take a look at the upcoming temperature pattern, the warmth prevails and it actually gets worse as we reach the midpoint of this week. We're going to get spring-like conditions really across the eastern United States. A lot of these grays are going to be 15 to 30 five degrees above normal so certainly a huge departure from what's typical and this is what's going to allow on this same day the potential for thunderstorms across the southeast and mid-atlantic like i mentioned so wednesday the fourth is when we're watching for that then the cold front rolls through with those storms and we see colder air able to make its way in around later this week so thursday friday saturday time frame uh not a huge cool down uh, but certainly going to be a big cooldown compared to the warmer temperatures we were seeing just a couple of days before this. Then this particular model shows warmth in the east after this point. But now we see cold entering back into the east on the back end of this towards the middle point of the month, which is not something we could say about this model just even yesterday. So this is a brand new development here. But this does look very averaged out to me. Okay, We have multiple members all uh, combining their mean average opinion here and when you get them this far out 365 or 360 hours better yet you get kind of this blended up unrealistic scenario where we have cold from coast to coast there's probably plenty of these members in this model that are showing cold in the west and warm in the east and then plenty that are showing cold in the east warm in the west and really what we get here is more cold than warmth but Probably this is not what it will look like is what I'm trying to get at. Now, we will continue to update you guys on this upcoming pattern. I'm very excited about it. I think there's multiple interesting storms to talk about, including that monster over the central United States. Uh, and then the temperature pattern is looking very interesting as well. Some spring-like weather, back into some winter-like weather, back into some spring-like weather, and then back again into the winter-like weather. It's going to be all over the place, and I kind of enjoy that. I'm not going to lie. So I will continue to update you guys on this daily. Be sure to subscribe so you catch those daily uploads. Also, you can hit that bell icon for daily notifications when we do upload. Also, like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.